Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I'm John Anderson. I'm a professor at the University of Idaho. Um, I lived my entire life in virtual reality, uh, and I've had the honor of uh, starting a design program back in 2001 called Virtual and Technology and Design, which is trying to create the next level of designers and architects, if you will, to create humanity within the metaverse. I've had the fortune and honor to work with some amazing people in my life, but none um, probably more amazing than Dr. John Francis here, and I'll let you introduce himself. Hi, my, my name is uh, Dr. John Francis, and um, I'm glad to be here with my friend John Anderson and colleague. Um, and I guess I, I should start off with, or are we going to start the video first, huh? Hi, my name is Dr. John Francis. I'm also known as the Planet Walker. Currently, in partnership with the GLOBE program, I'm on Planet Walk Africa a walking journey beginning in Cape Town, South Africa, traveling the length of the continent to Cairo, Egypt. The walk will span several years. During that time, I hope to visit all 27 globe countries, even if they're not on the Planet Walk route. This Planet Walk is dedicated to children everywhere. It embodies the ethos of how we treat each other is how we treat the environment. Leveraging XR technology with Professor John Anderson at the University of Idaho, we aim not only to collect GLOBE data to share with scientists around the world, but also immerse children in an interactive environment that cultivates empathy, environmental stewardship, and global kindness. We are seeking to empower the next generation with the understanding that acts of kindness toward each other and their environment can ripple outwards to positively impact the planet. Join us. Hi, and um, so you know my name is uh, Dr. John Francis. Um, I didn't start off that way. Uh, but I'll give you the, the five-minute story, which is that when I saw an oil spill in 1973 in San Francisco Bay, I gave up the use of motorized vehicles and started walking. Soon after that, I argued with people about what one person could do, so I decided to take a, a, a vow of silence for one day on my birthday. I turned 27, and I took that vow of silence. I didn't speak for one day and realized that I hadn't been listening. So I decided that I think I was going to learn if I would listen. And so I decided to keep silent for the next 17 years. And so I didn't speak for the next 17 years, walked across North America, stopping, working, going to school, getting my undergraduate in Oregon, a master's in Montana, and my PhD in Wisconsin in environmental studies. Exxon Valdez happened. I walked to the rest of the United States, started speaking on Earth Day, and uh, worked for the Coast Guard, writing oil pollution regulations for the United States, sailed down through the Caribbean, and to South America and walk the length of South America. I was ready to go to Africa when my fiance said to me, John, we have to raise a family. And so we got married, I raised a family. We, my kids are all out of school now and uh, I'm ready to walk the length of Africa. But with the GLOBE program and with the help of John Anderson to to reach more and more children about how we can bring science and kindness together. So uh, this is the goal of Planet Walk, to reach children all over the world. And the technology that I had in, oh, I guess it was the 1900s, <laughs> uh, 1990, walking down the length of South America was a, a, a two and a half pound or a two and a half kilo uh, adventure satellite transmitter called the Argos Transmitter, Argos Adventure. And uh, it only had 16 pre-coded messages. I could send, like, I'm walking normally, I see an endangered species, and all the way to uh, number 16, which was 
come get me help. Uh, and I used all 16 of those. But the technology has changed uh, over the years. And now for this walk uh, in uh, South Africa up to Cairo, uh, we have uh, XR reality and so XR technology. And that's what we want to use to involve all the children of the world in this walking journey. Uh, about kindness and so that we can understand that along with all the other things that are important about the environment, saving the trees and all of that, people are part of the environment as well and that's what I discovered. I would not have been able to walk across North America as, a, as an African American without any incident except kindness because kindness kind of transcended all those barriers that we put in, in front of ourselves and po policy, po political, religion, uh, all the racial things. It, kindness transcends all of that. And so I experienced that and that's why uh, I believe that kindness is really the, the special sauce that we need in order to survive and go on. So, uh, John, I'm going to just turn it over to you because John has been working on the technology and co-creating this with uh, myself and the GLOBE program, uh, how we're going to use uh, XR in, in the journey of Planet Walk. Yeah, I think you all, and as you all are aware of XR, it's a communication device. Right, we have to use it as that. We forget that. The telephone, the television, and now telepresence. So we can now go and be with people, communities, anywhere in the world, share these spaces, communicate, and talk. I created for most of my career lots of platforms and games and environments that were wrong. It was through my point of view. My perception is only one perception of an infinite amount of perceptions. XR is the first technology we have that we can actually share points of view with each other. And the normal is broken. We had a wonderful talk with Tom Furness right before this, talking about metrics and how we watch people and analyze. And, you know, of course, scientifically, we gotta look at the, all those metrics and we try and infer people's beliefs and feelings from that. Uh uh, not even close to it. We're so wrong. So, XR technology is about us telling our own story our own way. So I've had the fortune for over the last decade to work with a lot of indigenous communities around the world from Siberia to, well, you name it, now Africa, and we're launching this thing, and these children are telling their own stories their own way. They're using the technology authentically their own way, right? So most of my journey has just been one of listening, and John has been one of the greatest instructors in that. So now that we are in this era, this is the golden era, this is the era we've been waiting for, right? You know, with XR and virtual reality, it used to be a very ex exclusive club. Uh, I can go back 25 years ago to the station, the SGI station. I had $250,000 just to run the software and the VR helmet. You know, it's great working with NASA and all these people who do it, but that does not serve the regular person and the regular community. It was highly westernized point of view, right? It's been col colonized to some extent. We have to decolonize all this. We have to have a new point of view that leads this. In the prior um, presentation, uh, the conversation of ethics came in, right? You know, what is that? Well, it's not our ethics, not for us to decide, right? It's for everyone to decide it. So what we're going to be doing is walking on a journey. We do need all your help. You know, this is a journey together. This isn't about me. It's not about John. It's about all of us and how we communicate. But we're going to be starting with the children. As I said, this is the generation we've been waiting for in virtual reality. And so now as we start to do it, so I'd often say, and I challenge all of you with this one, and I bring this one forward, is that science has brought us here very far. But there's something we forgot about science, and this is the Western point of view. We have isolated nature, we have brought into our labs, we try to think we understand nature, Mother Earth, and the state of being through science and science alone. We have to understand that there is something called spirit. We have taken spirit away from science. And now, through our technology, we think we can redesign reality without spirit, with only science. That's what's not leading us in the right path. So kindness is one of these elements of spirit. This is something we all possess. 
Tom Furness again was talking about sensing and perceptions and our human eyes have the ability to sense things that we can't see and that we have lost that. So I think through this whole route of getting lost following technology, we're kind of getting back to our original roots maybe with this. You know, we need to open our hearts and minds and ears in particular, especially to the indigenous science networks that existed that has pushed us to where we are at even today that we have actually forgotten about. Not, luckily, not everyone, right? So this XR technology now, we're going to be bringing, what, 27 new countries on board? There are 27 countries already, I think, in, in Africa that are globe countries. But the idea is to uh, uh, visit those countries who are not on the route and even visit those countries who are not uh, globe countries and uh, bring Planet Walk to those countries as well. And so GLOBE, if you get familiar with it, is, is trying to get a next generation of citizen scientists, if you will. You know, you can go out and start to understand the land, the water, the earth, the air, and start to bring the senses. NASA is trying to do it. But the problem we have is it's wonderful to sense all this data with the satellites and the technology we have. It's very difficult to understand the person's point of view and emotions of what is happening with that change. Right, And that is where we now need to take it. So I do a lot of landscape management plan. I do a lot, I'm a world builder. I work with land managers all the time. And they go out there and I always ask in my VR helmet, whether it's up in the Kenai Peninsula, et cetera, and we're doing something, you know, wherever it is. Like, what do you see? Just ask a simple question. What do you see? And all of you will see something different. All of us see a different image. There's not a single one of it. So land managers sometimes say, oh, I see linear board feet. Right? They see the, the trees. I have some of my indigenous elders. And I see my family. I see medicine. I see a canoe. I see fishing. I see hunting. Right? You see so many other things. So why do we have conflict? Because we don't see the same picture. None of us see the same picture because we're stripping what I would say is the spirit from the vision and the science. So in XR, our next greatest challenge is to try and understand what that means. That's not religion. That's spirit. You know, we all have a different connection to what we're connecting to. And John is one of these uh, leaders, no doubt, in this world that I'm honored to be following. Um, but he's giving us a few uh, tidbits here, especially in XR. How do we build in kindness as a model with everything we do? And then if not only just kindness, but how do we also allow for the shared perceptions of those realities that we do share and hold? Um, as Tom said, is what's most important is when you take the technology away. Not when it's on, when you take it away. Right? Yeah. I, uh, one of the things that, that I um, discovered walking across America, getting and you know, studying environment, was that, that I didn't hear was that, you know, uh, people are part of the environment. And if people were part of the environment, then how we treated each other. Um, was probably fundamental to being an environmentalist, if that's what we would call ourselves. But environment, to me, became not only about how we took care of the trees, the water, and the, those things, which are also really very important, but uh, if we're each part of the environment, then how we treated each other. So environment became about human rights and civil rights and gender equality and economic equity and all the ways we relate to each other. And so that's when I started speaking on Earth Day um, 1990. It was the 20th anniversary of Earth Day because I wanted to remind myself that I was going to speak for the environment and the environment for, for me had, had changed to be about how we treated one another. Uh, because how we treat each other is going to manifest in the physical environment around us. And so that became probably the most important thing for me. And, uh, and sharing that with uh, the rest of the world is uh, the mission of Planet Walk. Yeah, so our challenge is the tool building era, right? We're still in it a little bit. Hopefully we're going to get out of it. So how do we build empathy tools? Right? That's just one, one, one problem right there that we could all spend a, a lot of time is whenever we have a platform, how do we build in empathetic reactions? Right? Yeah. Do we have any questions? Could we, could we wanna yeah, actually, this would be a great time. Yeah, we're going to be short. We're really interested to hear everyone's thoughts of their own experiences with technology, nature, um, and, and kindness in particular. Yeah, we'd love to hear some questions.
Hello, uh, my name is Antonio, and nice to meet Hi. you both. Uh, I do a lot of uh, mindfulness meditation work and have brought some of it into XR, AR, VR. Uh, and I in mindfulness, you know, we are reminded sometimes just through a direct experience, we kind of turn off our senses, we can just be with our inner self. It becomes very clear we're all one thing. You're not even a part of one thing, we're just one thing. And then we kind of, this one thing expresses itself as human beings, planets, the cosmos, but ultimately there is no separation. If you just rewind the tape of time, at no point somebody said, cut, next scene. It's literally one thing. So to your point about empathy, I guess the, the question for me is how can we remind more people of that even deeper uh, thing that it is, is we're all one thing. So what we do here, butterfly effect, everything and vice versa. So I don't know, I'm just an open-ended question about how do we bring empathy to this place pre-language, pre-labels, pre-meaning even where we're all just one thing. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's the question. <laughs> I, I think that, and that's a good question, and I think that's the work that we have to do. And what we would like to, um, I think, uh, with the walking journey, uh, for me, it was that experience, is that I was always here, <laughs> and that I'm always here. And, but I didn't know that until um, I got out of my car and walked for 22 years, and they realized that, no, this is where where I am. Was always where I am, and and these are all the people in my life, and and I'm all, always part of these people. So um, it was that experience that I don't think we all get a chance to have that uh, reminded me of what life is, and um, this is what I would like to co-create with. Uh, people who are working in uh, XR in that kind of uh, platform and reality so that we can experience that, particularly that children can experience it. And, and like you say, John, it's uh, when you take off the technology, what did we learn? So I'd like to expand. John nailed it. It's the experience. You know, I actually argue that it's already here. <laughs> it's how we use it, right? And so the experience is that point of view, right? We all refer to it also as the lenses or the channels we wish to subscribe to. I always talk about a lot of my work, I always like to turn on the helmet and you have the lenses. You're looking at a land manager lens, right? So you're looking at water quality, you're looking at all these other effects. What if I switch it to an indigenous lens? And now I experience the same world but through the point of view of an elder. Do I have an empathetic feeling because I have an experience, right? And you're completely right with wellness, right? We know that we share this construct of time, which is known now with every single element in the cosmos, right? We are one. We do know that. And I have gained a tremendous amount through our profession of XR because of that experience. I get to share thousands of experiences of communities of stories they've told for themselves. And I get a look at it through their point of view, not my point of view. And then that's where I've suddenly realized the empathy side is that I am wrong. Not that I'm not a perfect or good person, but I'm wrong because I haven't been listening to myself, right? And that is ourselves. And so I think the more we have these experiences, and that's why this is the golden age, we have the ability for children, people, places, anywhere in the world to share their experience. And if you cannot walk in somebody else's shoes, you don't understand what their world is like, right? And so I think empathy is coming, I would hope, if as a collective group we, we really cherish that. If we really cherish to push up that voice of the voiceless. I work with a lot of neurodivergent students in particular. I am a dyslexic thinker myself. I see a different world. I've been put in the corner in the classrooms all the time as being that either problem child or something else because nobody could see what I saw, the beauty in it, right? But now as we get this, I think empathy is coming. And I think that technology, if used correctly, will allow us to have a better understanding of authenticity in particular. My biggest question with empathy is, uh, do we even understand what authenticity is? Because when we can look at that mirror back on ourselves through a wellness lens, 
are we comfortable with what we even see? Right? So it's going to be experience. Thanks. That's a wonderful question. Thank you so much. Aloha uh, kako, opono koe ino, aloha. Obviously, I'm Hawaiian, right? Um, I think uh, just to understand is that do you think empathy can achieve in the absence of culture? Um, and I, I say that because I had an interesting conversation that in in, the, in my project as exactly is what I'm attempting to capture, the personal experience to allow the human to exist even in the VR, XR, AR world in this realm because it is truly about the transformation of the minds and the hearts after you take off the headset um, and allow the feeling to transform you into a capacity of action while being in a place of appreciation. So do you think that as you walk the world, doctor and professor, as you experience his journey side by side, um, would it be great to continue um, enhancing the existing cultures that you walk amongst to capture um, the essence of that people in that time to share with the world? I'll hop in over quick and then I'll let John. Um, well, culture is everything. I mean, yeah. uh, culture and, and language. So ultimately, we have to start with that language and, and I think uh, communicate using the language of the cultures and the peoples that we have is, is paramount. Um, and that, that's the start. So actually, I would say, yeah, once we capture language, we capture culture, and then we also uh, capture empathy. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I don't think we're, we're trying to get rid of culture. I think we're, we're really trying to learn. And, and, and my, um, I guess my MO, as I would say, is I, when I'm someplace, I know nothing. I'm here to listen and here to learn. Um, and I know that sometimes I, I see this little box and I, it tells me what, I, what I'm supposed to think. And I, and I go, I don't really know. <laughs> I have to turn that away and go, I, don't, I know nothing. I, some, I saw something, but I know that that's not really what's in front of me, that's not really where I am now. And so my MO is to listen and to learn. And that's why I didn't speak for 17 years, is because I realized I had not been listening and I had stopped learning because I thought I knew everything. And the only reason I started to talk is because I thought I had something to say, which is that we're all part of the environment and how we treat each other is fundamental to being human. And if we can learn to be kind to each other, I think that we can learn to live together and that's a message that I thought was worth 17 years of listening to everyone to say. I said, John, you should say that now. And, um, and, I, and I learned something on the banjo and I'll play that as the very last thing, <laughs> but if there's any more questions. We actually don't have any more time for questions, but if you want to play your banjo, so sorry. Um, yeah. Well, I know we're out of time real quick, right. but I'm just going to leave it with one word that I learned from John this morning. Again, culture's critical of it. It's uh, twin swallow. It's a South African word from uh, the song the People, which is often translated, and this is what I fully mean for John and all of you in here. It's the intangible feeling of love, gratitude, and peace to bestow on someone who has given you me meaningful and worthingful gift in life. And that's a word you don't know unless you experience it. So with that, John, go for it. <laughs> Since Wallow. <laughs> 